Hi, everybody, and welcome to In the Hawk's Nest, brought to you by the Co-op Store. This is Jack Benedict with Coach Paul Tortorella. We're going to talk IUP football. We're going to talk recruits, the present, maybe what's coming up in the future. Coach, good to have you with us again. Thanks for having me, Jack. You know, I know it's always a busy time when you come up and you're trying to get in recruiting season. Has the dust settled a little bit for you? Get a little bit of breathing time now? Yeah. I mean, at our level, uh, you know, it's not a 365-day year recruiting job like it is in Division One, but once you're finished, uh, you take you know deep breath, and now we're starting to get ready for our uh, we're in our off-season program, and uh, spring practice will be coming up. Sure, yeah. 18 signees, nine from the WPIAL. Is that a focus, or or do you go with what a lot of coaches say? We're going after the best athletes that we can get. It's probably a little of both. We, you know, we just basically recruit the state of Pennsylvania, break it up into three sections, west, central, and east. Uh, I think we got nine from the west, uh, five or six from the east, and three or four from the central. So we, we really blanketed the whole state. Uh, we, you know, we do have a lot of Western PA guys, not only in the program, but on staff. So we have a lot more contacts and relationships, although you know, we've got a lot of great relationships throughout the state. So, uh, you know, it ended up that way. Some Sometimes it's it goes the other way and you get a little more from the east, but we're really happy with everybody we had. Mm -hmm. You seem to be um, a little heavier this year on Pennsylvania. Uh, in other years, there've been some from the right. adjacent states, but was that by design? Yes, we didn't, you know, we looked at one or two guys outside the state and felt like, uh, you know, if we're going to go out of state for a high school kid, there's got to be a contact, a relationship, former, you know, maybe their dad played here. Uh, you know, last year I can think of two guys we took out of state, Stone Shugarts, his dad played here, and then uh, Cobb from down in D.C., uh, uh, Lou Choice had coached them. So there, there was a contact there because when you go out of state, it really eats up your scholarship numbers. So we, we, we've got to concentrate on – uh, basically blanket in the state of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I noticed in the breakdown uh, uh, categories here, five offense, eight defense, one they call specialists, and now in the last few years, athletes. We call athletes or four of those. That's a it's, it's pretty even bake, uh, breakdown for you, isn't it? Yeah, we, we really concentrated mostly on th the three positions we had to really hit hard were Defensive back, defensive end, and offensive line. We got three offensive linemen, four defensive ends, and four defensive backs. So uh, we took care of our greatest needs that way. Uh, you know, there was a couple, you know, next year would probably be a little different, but this happened to be a year where we felt like we have to really replenish on defense. Uh, we've, we've got more players coming up through the system offensively that are still in the program, mm -hmm. that are older, we're younger on defense. Um, so we, we really concentrated, like I said, on the two positions on defense, but then we took two linebackers. We got a really good defensive lineman also. And then, uh, you know, we took a couple receivers on offense. So I thought we did well. You know, some years you recruit certain positions, and it just happened to be that way this year. Sure. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do when we come back. We're going to give you some names. You want to hear names about these players, and we'll look at the offense and those players who are coming into the program. You're with our program called In the Hawk's Nest, and we're happy to bring it to you, courtesy of the Co-op Story, plus for the student, and a plus for you, Jack Benedict with Coach Tortorella. We'll be right back after we take this time out. store to get all your IUP apparel. Get your hawk on. And welcome back to In the Hawk's Nest. Jack Benedict with Coach Paul Tortorella as we talk about IUP football. This all brought to you by the co-op store. A plus for the student and a plus for you. Let's talk about offense, Coach. And I know uh, you had talked, we had talked uh, about linemen. Did you need a lineman? And I know at one point you said you had like Eight, eight names on the board, right. and the top three, you got them all. Tell us about some of the linemen that you got. 
That's exactly right. You know, going into it, we had eight linemen that we were targeting, and we only ended up visiting five of them because the top three committed early. You know, the first weekend we had uh, two linemen commit, and then the second weekend on that Saturday we had a, the third lineman commit, so we were done. And that, that's really important because that's how things fall into place. When you can take care of a position you need to take care of, now you can move on. You know exactly where you're at. You don't have to wait, and you can go into other positions. But the three linemen we got, like I said, they were the top three on the board. A tackle from Coatesville, Richard Santiago. Uh, maybe right now a hair undersized weight-wise, but he's very long, long-armed. Uh, plays in a great league, great team. I believe they played in the uh, state semifinals. Um, our go- one of the guards we took was uh, from Central Dauphin, Chad Layton. He played on a team that played in the state semifinals also. Very physical, uh, reminded us of Doberman a lot. Mm-hmm. And then the center we got, Gerald Comedy from Wash High. They were undefeated. They lost in the uh, WPIL playoffs. Uh, he is a, a big body that moves like you wouldn't think a guy that big would move uh and he probably when you look at it may be the most pancakes we've seen in a while on high school film well you know uh, i'm not a coach and i can't evaluate the way you guys do but when i hear a name i'll go in and i'll look at right. highlights and the fans will look at these high- and that's the first thing i thought of so, my goodness even downfield right he's and he was a wrestler too wasn't yeah he's he? a wrestler and uh a lot of our guys are wrestlers uh, that we recruited this year, linemen. Uh, he's a center, which is even more important because obviously those guys are hard to come by. Well, you're losing Jeff Arnold, who's been there right. for four years. Exactly. And, and our, our thinking was Arnold and McAllister are gone, and then next year Doberman and Roman will be gone. So when that happens, you better be a year ahead, and that's why we took the three that we took. Well, uh, what's good is the fact that Roman does have another year. Correct. He'll be back in the fall, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and the guys like uh, Davis, uh, John Robinson, Absolutely. They, they had a lot of experience from last well, yeah, year. Yeah, John Robinson, I think, started eight games. Daryl started five. Uh, they're both going to be juniors that have played a good bit. Uh, John was a pleasant surprise. We always thought he would be a player, but he pretty much came... came uh, mm-hmm. A little bit faster than we thought and it wasn't a lot of uh, transition period you know Colin McAllister was hurt much of the year and he stepped in and did a great job uh, and then you got Doberman that's been a starter since he's been here and Kenny's been a three-year starter yeah exactly let's talk about receivers on the offensive side and I know one of them opened up my eyes uh, right away a young man from Thomas Jefferson you can talk about him I saw him play in high school a few years ago when I was covering Indiana high football the two receivers you got well, Dan Debner from Thomas Jefferson uh, statistically is off the charts. I mean, the guy's been playing for four years at a great program. They won the state championship. They were undefeated. Uh, you know, you don't even realize it because you pay attention more to their senior year than anything, but this guy had like 44 touchdowns, and he played defense, but he's a receiver, and he had 11 interceptions. Mm. And uh, he was player of the year in 4A in the WPIAL. Uh, great receiver, very smart, uh, is just a football player. And we were very fortunate to get him because he had a lot of one double A interest, especially early. Mm-hmm. Um, and he comes from a good, as good a program as there is in the state with uh, Bill Chirpak as the head coach. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then we took another receiver from Springfield, Alex Williams, and we really liked his size. He's six two. He's got really long arms. And like we had said in the past, you know, we kind of have receivers that are real tall or short and real fast. So now Dan Debner's a little bit in the middle there. You know, he's about six foot, good body on him, uh, great hands. Alex is a bigger guy. You know, Dwayne Brown's kind of in the middle, but then you you got Carter, who's a smaller, fast guy. Uh, And we've got a couple other big receivers we recruited last year, uh, Hardy and Ridley. So, you know, it, it's kind of interesting the way we line up at wide. I, you know, we're like five nine and then six two or six three. Mm. But uh, Debner will be a, a great uh, receiver in our league, we believe. And and Williams is a guy because of size. Uh, you saw what JoJo did last year. Yeah, JoJo had a great year. Uh, let me bring up Irv Charles for just a right. moment. Irvin Charles, 
the young man from Penn State couldn't play last year. What's the latest on him? You do expect him back in the fall? Yes, he just has to graduate from Penn State. He's in the process of doing that, and he'll be a graduate transfer. Um, so we're expecting him to be here in the fall. Uh, you now things could change. Uh, it's 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 an ongoing uh, situation in regards to you can't really sign a guy that's coming out of uh, a four-year school. So uh, we're we're very fortunate, and we think that you know he'll be here in the fall. Okay. Yeah. He's six four. So well, that's there's the that's, there, the that's uh he's even taller than JoJo, and he's actually got longer arms. So. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing what those guys. We in the red zone, we were number one in the country in scoring touchdowns this no year kidding. in the red zone, and a big part of it was JoJo size and then obviously Dwayne Brown. All right, those are some names for you. We're going to come back and we're going to talk defense with Coach Tortorella here. We're in the Hawks Nest, brought to you by the Co-op Store, and we'll be back right after this timeout. Co-op store to get all your IUP apparel. Get your hawk on. Welcome back, everyone, to In the Hawk's Nest. Jack Benedict with Coach Paul Tortorella for the Co-op Store. A plus for the student and a plus for you. We talked offense. Let's talk defense now. Coach Lineman, Edge Russers. Uh, you've got four there. Right. Uh, those guys. Uh, t talk about those guys and who we're going to be looking at here in the future. Well, you know, when we look, we look, we've lost two really good defensive ends in Easterling last year and Tillman this year. And we still have some guys in the program that have a chance to be pretty good players. But the effect that defensive ends have on offenses in regards to the pass rush at any level is, is you know, you look at the Steelers last year, they struggled on defense, and all of a sudden they've got Watt and Dupree having great years rushing the pass, and it totally changes their defense. Well, it's like that at every level. So we really concentrated on getting, you know, defensive ends that could affect the quarterback and rush the passer. And the four we got, uh, Maurice Fizell from York High, Terrell Williams from Chambersburg, uh, Tyrone Fowler from Bishop McDevitt. Those are guys that uh, are defensive ends. We think uh, Noah Vaughn from Beaver Falls, who's a big linebacker, will probably transition to a defensive end position. He played linebacker, but he rushed the quarterback a lot. So uh, these are big, tall, long-armed, athletic guys. Uh, you know, Fazell could probably be one of the faster guys on our team, and he's going to be a defensive right? end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's p probably right now a little undersized, but, you know, we get him in our strength program. We're expecting him to be a 220-pound defensive end that's got amazing speed off the edge. So we're really happy with, you know, we were looking for defensive ends that could affect the quarterback and rush the passer. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's not often you lose linebackers like Damon Boyd right. and Nick Amendola, both All-Americans in their own right, a lot of honors to them, and they were solid for three right. years for you. So there's a, a spot linebacker you had to uh, replace. Now, uh, you may want to talk about uh, Connor Kelly, first of all, right. who's transferring in from Edinburgh. Uh, played very well against us last year, against IUP. So you like that, and he's he's going to follow his brother here, right? Yes, he, you know, obviously with Zach having the success he had here, uh, you know, with Edinburgh making a transition at head coach, uh, he was interested in coming aboard. We were interested in him, obviously, with the family. Uh, you know, just the relationships we've had with the family, it made it really easy. He's a bigger linebacker than what we've been playing with. He's about 6'2 and a half, 6'3, 230 pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had great linebacker play, uh, but we weren't real big at the position. So uh, we got a little bigger there, a lot of experience, played a lot at Edinburgh, never redshirted. He's going to be a junior. Uh, we still have Brandon Myers back, obviously, uh, and a couple of the young freshmen. Uh, uh, Darius Lloyd and uh, and Biss, who were Biss was redshirted, obviously, but we recruited two linebackers, um, Montel Sims from Central Valley. They won the WPIL, lost in the state championship game. Uh, his brother was a really good player at Edinburgh, and so was his father, and so he's got the bloodlines. And he got hurt after the fourth game of the year, 
if he doesn't get hurt, he's only 5'11". If he's an inch or two taller and doesn't get hurt, he's not going to fall to us. So this is a Dwayne Brown story. Almost. Yeah, it's, and he hurt his knee, and he should be ready come fall. Mm-hmm. He hurt, hurt it early enough in the season. Uh, it's just a, you know, he just shows up on film as a blur at linebacker. Uh, and then we, we've got uh, King, uh, Trout from Greensburg-Salem. Caven uh, Trout. Trout, Dave Kiefer, obviously former player for us, coached him. Sure. And uh, big, again, big athletic. He's about 6'3", 215 pounds right now. Really long arms, uh, you know, the body type that we're looking for. So we felt good about, obviously, a linebacker, defensive end, and then probably the best football player on the whole defensive side is probably Danielson, the defensive tackle from Thomas Jefferson. He got the Freilich Award this year. Uh, he's an all-state defensive tackle. Uh, he's in the backfield. He knows how to play defensive line. His brother plays at Pitt. We're very fortunate to get this guy. He's a little undersized height-wise. He's only about 6'1", uh, 265. He's a great wrestler, and he makes a lot of plays from an inside. You know, you have the guys that play inside that eat up blocks and free up linebackers. This guy makes plays in the backfield, both in the run and pass game. And uh, He's another guy that people were really shocked that we were able to get. Mm-hmm. Logan Danielson, keep the name in mind. Anytime, as we talked about before, you're coming from a program like TJ, right. and and in the uh, you know in the manner of Bill Freilich, I mean, <laughs> right? You know, that's big time yep. stuff. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, so there you go. From you know from that uh, standpoint, DBs. Yeah, uh, you know, situation last year. You played three guys who were true freshmen, Correct. and you lost people. So. Talk about these guys. Well, we feel very uh, good in regards to, you know, we have Streeter back at corner. We have Dreyer back now full-time on defense at star. We've brought in Bryce Gibson, who was a two-year starter at Youngstown State from Johnstown. Uh, his cousin had played here back in, in the uh, before I got here. And he's, he's a very productive player for Youngstown State, really good player, but they had the coaching change. And, mm-hmm. you know, he felt like it would be better to come home and, and play here from Johnstown. He'll be, you know, he'll he'll be a starting corner. He'll be with us in the spring, obviously. And then you still had the uh, two of the freshmen that played safety, Haynes and Cobb. But we felt like obviously three of those guys are going to be seniors next year, Dreyer and the two corners. So we had to we had to get four defensive backs, and we got a really good corner, uh, Washington for from Upper Perkiomen in Philadelphia. Randy Washington. Randy Washington. A lot of plays, makes a lot of plays. His team wasn't very good. He's he's like there's only two guys on out of the 18 that really came from a team that didn't win at least eight games. Mm. But he was all over the field, and he he was the number one corner that we had rated, and then three the three safeties that we had rated out of the top four, we ended up getting uh, from Erie Prep. Uh, Howard is a great player. Uh, we got him on the last weekend, Jaheim Howard. Uh, another guy that, you know, if you, if you look at it, you, you, some one double A people were interested in him. He's, he's pretty dynamic as a defensive back. We've got Isaiah Toller from Aliquippa, another Erie prep, Aliquippa. So, we're, you know, these are all great programs. Yeah, they are. He had eight interceptions. If you get eight interceptions in one year in high school, you, you're playing pretty good because you, you don't get a lot of interceptions no. in high school. No. And he's a center field type free safety, strong safety that can really play the ball like we haven't seen in a while. Mm-hmm. And we've got a, a Charles Ingram who is a star, and he's from Philadelphia, and Kyrie Cooper, named from the past, corner to play for us, sure. was, was his position coach. Oh. So we knew about him right away. Kyrie heavily uh, recommended him. Uh, so And... and also, Charles knew a lot about IUP from Kyrie, so he came here, visited the first weekend, and I think in two days he committed. And he's he's a guy that's a a great blitzer, very physical, plays fast, uh, is what we're kind of looking for at star position. He's a bigger guy too. He's about five eleven, two hundred pounds, so and very very physical and a great blitzer. So uh, we we felt like. You know, the only guy that we didn't get that was a safety that we liked ended up going to a Division One AA school. So yeah. we felt like we did as good as we could do there. Sure, yeah, sounds good. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about the term now of athletes, players who can play all over the place and 
as coaches, they got to figure out where we're going to play these right. guys. <laughs> so we'll be back in a moment. We're in the Hawk's Nest, brought to you by the Co-op Story, plus for the student, a plus for you. And we'll return right after this timeout. to the co-op store to get all your IUP apparel. Get your hawk on. Welcome back. Good to have you in the Hawks Nest for this year. Jack Benedict with Coach Paul Tortorella. Always great to talk IUP, Crimson Hawks football, going down the list of some of the players for the future. And, and of course, as we mentioned before when, when we left you, about athletes. Uh, term athletes has come in to vogue in the last uh, few years. Uh, tell us about the guys that you have tabbed as athletes, and, you know, these are multifaceted players. Well, the four guys we just spoke about at, at defensive back, uh, Randy Washington could easily be a slot receiver for us. Uh, Jaheim Howard and Charles Ingram could play running back for us. Hmm. And Toller is a guy that could play, he's athletic enough that he could play wide out or running back. Then we, we have a guy like uh, Cam Krizelic from West Allegheny. He played six positions in high school, and we're going to make him a tight end H-back. And he played quarterback, he played tight end, he played running back, he played defensive end, and he played linebacker. So, you know, he was a wildcat quarterback. He was a passing quarterback. But he's got great size, very athletic, uh, good basketball player, and he might be – you know, the guy that might fly under the radar on this class. And, you know, if he just fi we find the right position for him, we think he can be a really good player. So he, he comes under the term athlete. And believe it or not, our place kicker was a, a really good slot receiver at Chamber Chambersburg High School. His dad, who's the head coach there, used to be the head coach at Lock Haven back about 10 or 15 years ago, Mark Luther. Oh, yes, and, I remember the name. And, and, and this is Tyler, this right? This is his son, Tyler. Uh, we did not see a high school kicker that was even close to this kid. And he's a really good athlete, which you like, you know, and uh, he does everything, kicks, kicks off. He also punts too, but we're, we're just, you know, looking at him as being our field goal kicker and our kickoff guy because he, he, he just, you know, he was so much better than any other high school kid that we looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's got a really good mindset, obviously, with his dad being a head football coach so we were really and we were really uh fortunate to get him he's not a real big guy but there were some schools that were actually recruiting him as a slot receiver so we said hey look we we, we got slot receivers but mm -hmm. we, we need a place kicker well you lost dylan sark has been right. there for four years and you know the thing that we impress upon those guys is we score a lot of points you're going to be kicking a lot of extra points and you know if we have to kick field goals we just need a guy that can make it from 40 yards and in and we're, we're golden if we can get that. But we're really, really impressed with this kid. I, I, you know, for a high school kid coming out, he's probably as good as we've seen in a long time. Well, that's saying a lot. Right. right? Yeah, that is saying a lot. Uh, you mentioned about punting, too, but the situation, you have Dylan Grubbs going right. to be back, the big guy right. at 6'5", and he's got some experience now that yeah. he didn't have before. Uh, who else did, did, did you have uh, that we did not mention well, as far as an athlete? You, you know, we, we have a guy like Terrell Williams that's going to play defensive end for us. He was a great tight end at Chambersburg. He was number 25, you know, and he's playing defensive end, he's playing tight end. Fizel was a great tight end too. So, you know, we, we, we've concentrated on putting these guys on defense because we feel like to get to where we need to go in all three phases, we need to upgrade our defense uh, and, and get better on defense, you know, to win the big games. You know, you're going to win a lot of games on offense, and I'm a defensive guy. But you win championships if you can play defense. And we, we've got to get back the way we were playing in 2017. So you've got to replenish the talent. And uh, we felt like we did that. We recruited a whole defense. We, we have five defensive linemen. We have two linebackers. And we have four defensive backs. So we recruited a whole defense that are going to be freshmen. And uh, hopefully that class will be similar to the one that we just had that left here winning 41 games in four years. Did we leave anybody out on the list 
that uh, we haven't touched upon that maybe well, deserve exactly. some recognition? Because when you're talking well, about 18 I, players, you know, I think we hit we hit about everybody there, and we got the kicker. Yeah. Uh, we hit about yeah, we hit all 18, and and like I said. Uh, the thing that was probably just as important, you know, they have to be good football players, obviously, but academically, our class, the average academics for our class was a 3.1 grade point average and 1040 on the SAT. So, uh, you know, we, we recruited great students, uh, guys from great programs, good character guys, uh, you know, that have all the intangibles. Two transfers I want to mention. Quarterback, we haven't right. touched upon. We lost, you know, Quinton last year was just fabulous. Right. Uh, what a year he had. Alex Raymart, quarterback, and uh, the running back from right. Fork Union, DeJour Stewart. Right. Tell us about these two guys. Well, Stewart, the running back, has four years. We recruited him out of high school. He's from York, uh, Coach Smith's hometown. And he originally committed to Illinois State. Uh, didn't It didn't work out. He was short of a, a, a class, so he went to Fork Union for a semester. Uh, then the, the recruiting process starts all over again in December, mm -hmm. and we, we got on him right away. And, uh, you know, last year we got Hauser, so it ended up pretty good, even though that, you know, we didn't get DeJour last year. It worked out better that he went to Fork Union. We got uh, Adam Hauser, who we think is going to be a great running back, and now DeJour is like recruiting a high school kid again because, you know, he was in, at Fork Union. He has still four years left. He's a bigger back, which we need. We're a little small at running back. So that fit the part that we were looking for there. And then quarterback, you know, we're, we've got Javon Davis, and we brought in Alex Raymart from Akron. He kind of found us after the success that Quinton had. Uh, he's got two years left and potentially three years at the Division II level was a great high school quarterback in Texas, 6'3", uh, really long, tight body, very athletic, tight body. Uh, lit it up at 5A. They played in the state championship in Texas, and his number one receiver was C.D. Lamb that's going to be one of the top five guys picked in the draft mm -hmm. that went to Oklahoma. That's pretty good and you saw it on the film. The other receiver is at Texas A&M as a starter. So, you know, the pedigree from what he did in high school, and when you watch that Texas 5A high school film there's good players on both teams at every position and it's it's a lot faster football mm -hmm. than you see anywhere else and uh so you know he went to akron and much like a lot of the guys that transferred they had a coaching change brought in a new staff he was with terry bowden and the old staff and both he and the guy that was a two-year starter there uh, were kind of pushed back, and they brought in a freshman that they wanted to play that was their guy, mm -hmm. and it, it happens a lot, you sure, know, and sure. he saw where it wasn't really going to be uh, a good situation for him there without his coaches that recruited him, and uh, we've been happy with what we've seen of him in the weight room, and he's done some throwing on his own inside, and, I, you know, I, I guess he's, he's looked pretty good. So uh, it'll be a, a battle, and, you know, Javon will start out, as the starter in the spring, and Ray Mart will be 1A, so to speak, and the guy that has the best spring will come in as the starter in the fall. When the, and they're two different types, too, absolutely. aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, John, Javon, obviously, a little smaller, a uh, little bit more outside the pocket, but Alex can get outside the pocket and run also. But uh, Alex is, is more of a pocket passer than Javon just because he's three inches taller. Mm-hmm. All right, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of uh, the transfers, the uh, players that uh, Coach has recruited. We're going to be back in a moment, kind of sum this thing up, look to the future, the schedule, uh, coaching, needing uh, a coach, and that sort of thing on the way. So stay with us in the Hawk's Nest. It's all brought to you by the Co-op Store, a plus for the student, a plus for you. Coach and I will be back right after we take this time out. Co-op store to get all your IUP apparel. Get your hawk on. 
All right, we're back with you, and we're going to wrap it up here in, uh, in closing with a couple of notes. Uh, first of all, Coach, uh, you have to replace Coach uh, Jake Nolf, who congratulations to him, Paula Ridge guy, new right. coach at Edinburgh. Good opportunity for him, and he did a good job in the short uh, time he, he was here. Did a great job coaching our secondary. Well, he was here eight months. Uh, I kid around, you know, we bring a guy in for eight months. He coaches a position on our staff, and he goes and gets a head coaching job in our league. So <laughs> people must think pretty highly of IUP and obviously of Jake. Uh, he's a great young guy with a lot of energy. Uh, I think at Edinburgh, they, they got the right guy. They oh, really true. did. Yeah. Uh, so we've got to replace uh, Jake. And, and right now what we're uh, going to do is Coach Smith is going to move back and coach the secondary. And so we're looking for a linebacker coach right now. We have a couple people in mind uh, just working through the process, and we should have somebody in here coaching the linebackers for spring practice. All right, spring practice begins the end of March? Correct, the 27th, that yeah. Friday, weather permitting, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. The schedule, you have 10 games. We've talked about this before, right. 10 games on the schedule. The first two are away. And right. Kutztown and, and Shepard, it's quite a schedule this year with the three, probably the three top right. teams out of the East. Is there any chance that you might get an 11th, or what's your thought about well, it? Well, here, here's the situation with that. Uh, you know, I tried to get an 11th game, and it, and it has to be at home. We, we can't open up on the road with three road trips uh, just because it's not smart in general, plus the budget. Uh, you know, playing on the road, staying overnight, you know, we, we don't have the budget to do all that that early in the season to be you know perfectly honest with you so it has to be a home game nobody was really excited about playing us anyway and they definitely didn't want to play us at IUP so if there was a year that we wouldn't play an 11 game this is the, the year because our strength of schedule is going to be better than anybody's only playing 10 games when you've got Kutztown, Shepard, Slippery Rock and Cal those four plus either the PSAC championship in Westchester, you have the, the five top teams in, in the whole PSAC. Sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, schedule-wise, you're playing the top three teams in the East, and obviously your West schedule with Slippery Rock, Cal, and the rest of the, the West, I, I can't see how anybody would have a better strength of schedule than us in the whole region. So uh, it, it's not something we like to do, but... You know, we'll change some things how we practice, obviously, not having a first game. And, uh, you know, we won't be coming to camp as early, you know. So, you know, when you talk about budget, that saves you some money there. Uh, you know, I think it's hard to, to, to understand what it takes to run a, a Division two football program. I mean, you, you're talking almost a million dollars now when you talk about scholarships and operations. Wow. And people kind of take that for granted until you've got to be like me and Eric Templeton and pay the bills. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, I think people would be very shocked and surprised if I showed them how much it costs to run this program and what you have to do fundraising-wise just to to stay above water, to be honest with sure. you. So we're, you know, going to play the 10 games, and, you know, if we play well, that not having an 11th game shouldn't affect us. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness you have... You instituted the Gridiron Club a few years ago. Oh, absolutely. Every, everything we do fundraising-wise... Uh, gets us to where we can stay above water. You know, we do things the right way, but we don't do anything extravagant. We try to treat the players the best we can. Uh, but, you know, there's times where, you know, we got to pay the bills too. Yeah. And sometimes that's not as easy as people think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the bottom line is it's been a winning program, and I know it'll continue that way. Coach, thank you tremendously for coming in. We appreciate the time, and uh, I know the fans look forward to this. They, they, they love the recruiting thing, right. and we'll find out in a couple of years who's good and who isn't, right? Yeah, really, you can't tell until two years from now how the class is. Yeah, thanks, Tori. Thank you. It. Coach Tortorella with us. Glad to have you again. IUP football just around the corner, and uh, we hope to, to see you this coming season. So for the co-op store, wonderful people there in the Hawks Nest, for the coach, Jack Benedict, have yourself a nice evening.